Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and as you may know, one of my favorite things on this channel is to expose you guys to new tools, especially when those tools are free. And this one, this one was recommended to me a lot. I finally checked it out and I get why so many people recommend it. It's a cool program. And what we're looking at today is something called Agama or Agama or I don't know, Ama uh, Materials. Agama Materials, I'll go with that from now on. Uh, it is a 3D painting software plus uh, texture, procedural generation of texture software. I think Substance Painter, Substance Designer Lite, uh, but it is also free. And this is a really capable program. In terms of features, their feature set is pretty short on this list, but you basically create materials and paint in one app. You've got Control Z or undo support. Uh, it's simple procedural workflow. Uh, procedural, it uses, you know, metal maps, albedo, so on, uh, normal maps, etc. You can export out your results easily, so you can use this in the results in whatever game engine or 3D modeling software you want out there. And the workflow is non-destructive. We will see all of this in action in just a few. Also, on the nice side, uh, there is a solid set of documentation out there, including some video tutorials. It is updated a lot as well. And again, completely free software. So if you want to go ahead and grab it, uh, you can actually download it from their website, uh, which by the way, is available at agamamaterials.com. Of course, I will have that link down below. I will also have a link to their Discord server. So if you've got some comments or questions or whatever, they do have a Discord out there. And they also have a downloads page up on itch.io. Now the bad news for some of you, uh, you do need to have a GPU with Vulkan support and it runs on Windows 10. So I don't know if this will run under Wine or similar. Let me know if you've gotten this running under an emulation layer in the comments down below. Uh, but it is updated quite frequently. So the last update was six days ago. Before that, 32 days. 45 days, 74 days, and so on. So this is definitely evolving rapidly. The newest update included like a uh, brand new renderer, a bunch of other nice new features. So a uh, new renderer is in place, new nodes were added to the procedural setup, and so on. So without further ado, let us jump in and actually take a look at Agamo Materials. Now I do have to give one small bit of feedback. This is interesting. You know how when you're doing a setup, it says uh, add a desktop shortcut? Well, if you don't pick that, you get no shortcuts at all. It doesn't make a start menu entry, which is kind of interesting. So here you can see we are in the painting portion of uh, Agma. And what you see here is a model I pulled down. Uh, this is from Sketchfab. Uh, I set up all the various different materials in it. So you can see here we've got um, chroming, plastics, and so on. It's, it's a multi-texture uh, set uh, or UDIM uh, model. So you see here we've got a number of different named. So chrome, lights, reflections. You can, of course, have a single texture setup as well. I'll show you that in just a second. It's a little bit an easier workflow. Uh, but you can see here, this guy is composed of multiple different materials. And the materials are all super straightforward. So go here, materials, for example, um, the cherry red coloring is being controlled by this. So we've got the normal channel here, the metallic and roughness maps are both encoded here. Just drag and drop them in here. And then here you can see we have um, a, a, a vector three, which is an RGB value. And what I've done is I've set it to red with 0.6 alpha. So RGB, so that's a vector four actually, sorry, technically. And you basically create your materials using a network of nodes here. And as you can see from our thing, you've also got your texture painting built in here as well. Now, if you've used um, either Quixel Mixer or Substance Painter, you're gonna recognize some of this functionality right now. So here we go, we'll go into the um, cherry red coat. So here is the cherry red coat um, painting. And I'll go ahead and I'll select it down here, so coat. Right here, we've got it selected. And then you can see here is the texture map of it in action. What I can do is I can go ahead and create a new layer here. We can do a paint layer, and then we could basically just start drawing directly on our surface like so. And you can paint like that. It's that simple. Or I can paint directly on the texture over here. And generally, you're probably not actually going to work with that workflow, which, by the way, you just saw um, Control Z undo support in there. So instead, what you might want to do, let's get rid of that layer there. And we're going to do a fill layer instead. So you see here, it just filled it uh, with that particular color. Or what we could do is use one of their materials, which we could also create a material. I'll show you that in just a second. But here is a uh, pure gold material. So we're going to make the tackiest Porsche you ever saw. We'll just drag that in there and we'll move it up in the stack so that it's over top. So there you see we have a very golden Porsche. And that is hideous, but you see how fast you can go ahead and paint this. Now, you may not actually want the entire thing to work that way, so you've got one of two options. You can come in here, and you can right-click it, and we can mask it out. So I'm going to do a black mask, and now we're back to normal. And now I can paint on the mask where I want it to show. What did I do wrong here? One sec. 
Actually, I did nothing wrong. So you see down here, you've got all the controls over how your brush is set. You can have an image to define the alpha of your brush right here. You can change the size of it right here. But what I need to do is set the masking properties. Right now, it is set to zero. I could click here and I could say, okay, make that one. Or I could click this guy and pick a color. Oh, no, you can't. So here, zero to one. So now we're masking in. Anywhere I go ahead and paint here, it will now become white. So you see here, I can make just the hood golden like so. There you go. So you can have it mask through layers as you wish. So if we wanted to, we could have, say, another layer in here. So let's go ahead and grab uh, copper. So we'll drop, drop in copper. We will move it up there. And once again, you can go ahead and we'll do a masking on that. So we'll mask in the black, have it there. And now we can make the sunroof copper. By the way, you can also paint directly over here. So you can see how you can layer in, mix and match your different... Uh, materials on here and you can really make an ugly Porsche very 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 fast so you see here you've got multiple texture support uh, you've got um, multiple material and layers on that you'll also notice here we've got a number of options here so I can actually add in a straight out solid color a texture map I could do a, a Perlin noise generator on there in terms of my map so you see here the map just got all um, scattery looking there uh, so you have a ton of options with this you've got control over how your brush strokes work you have a, an opacity control here as well and yeah that's it's pretty awesome in that regard so here i'll show you another example i'll show you starting from scratch so i'm going to go ahead um we'll do a new texture so when you're just starting things off you've got a choice between making a material or doing a painting so we'll do a painting and you can import in a brush in a mesh so we can do an fbx or an obj file so i'll do something a lot simpler than what we've got here so let's go up a directory, sort of uh, Artorius. Uh, this again is also from uh, Sketchfab where I downloaded it. Go here, source, and let's bring in this OBJ file. All right, so there we can see that you can pick the axis of orientation right there. And there you go. So we now have this sword in place. Now, what you want to probably want to do is set up the textures on this sword. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material, create a new material right there, and we will call this a, sw a sw I'll go with sword. You can set the resolution of it, material type. you got different options there. So we're going to stick to straight out materials in this video. It is a procedural material that we are creating here. And we're going to go ahead and say done. So here you can see your output of your material is straightforward. Your albedo, your uh, normal metallic roughness, ambient occlusion, displacement, and emission map. So using a standard PBR-based workflow. And then what you want to do is bring in some images. Now what I want to do is import the textures for that guy. So go over here, the sword. Let's go to the textures. Oh, yeah, it defaults to ping. I want to go all textures. And let's grab all of them like so. So there we brought in all of our material textures. So that's uh, the albedo or the color channel. This is the metallic channel, normal map, and roughness. So here, roughness, just drop that into the roughness channel. Here, we've got, uh, assuming that's ambient occlusion. Here, we got El Eldo, all right, so we drop in the normal map over here, and then, oh, wait a minute, you, you are probably ambient occlusion. Yeah, that's ambient occlusion. Oops, ambient occlusion. And then what was the other one then? Roughness, metallic. Oh, okay, my bad. All right, so drop that into the metallic channel there. Pick the final output node, and you can see the results over here. By the way, uh, you do have control over um, how it is displayed. So if you'd rather see it in 3D, uh, you can do so right there. So there's creating a simple, straightforward material. And now what we do is we go back to our model. So where is my sword? Cherry Red Co. Okay, it's got a very strange name. Okay, right, so there we go. Here is our sword in action. Uh, we just created our new material. We basically just want to do a fill with our material. So grab it here. We'll grab the sword material and drop it in. There we go. So we now have a texture map sword that I accidentally just painted over. So there you can see, that is how you create a traditional texture here. So now what we could do is go ahead and say, all right, so we could do the exact same thing we did earlier on. We could do a fill, for example. So we'll just do uh, gold. We'll do a gold leaf, bring that in, pull that one up there. We don't want to do the whole thing. So again, we could just go ahead and add a mask onto that guy. Oops, not a stack. Oops, wrong one. And add a black mask. So we're only going to show the gold where we want it. It's set to one over here. And now you can start doing gold trimming. So we could just... And there you can see how easy it is to go ahead and start mixing and matching your materials together. Now, the cool part here is we can go back here to the materials uh so material we'll create a new material and this is the other aspect so this is procedural material and i'll call this my proc material and this is where we get into the substance designer type way of doing things 
And I gotta admit, I straight out kinda suck at this part of things, so this part of the demonstration is going to be a little bit weak. But if you've done any node-based procedural generation of materials, you're gonna be immediately at home. Now, as you saw earlier on, uh, we could literally just bring images in that we wanna work with and then connect them in like so, and we can manipulate those images however we wish. But what we're gonna do now is show you how to use some nodes. For, for example, if I right click here, you get a number of different options. So for example, I could do a generator and bring in uh, a noise or cells or, or anything along these lines. So a bunch of different uh, options here, pixel noise, polygon shapes, and so on. And we're just gonna go ahead and create a shape. So here you can see the start of it. You have a number of parameters over here you can start with. So let's do pyramids. All right, so here we got a single pyramid. Now let's texture that. So we're gonna do 10 times. And let's say you were doing like the, um, the scabbard or something. We got our basic shape available right here, and we could drop that straight into the uh, the color channel right there. We could also go ahead and do another node here, and you can search by the way. So let's do normal, and I'm going to do height map to normal, and then we'll just drop that in here, and then we'll drop that into the normal channel right there, and then that will create the normal. So you got the options over here. You can control the intensity. So you can see right here, I can do say five intensity, get a whole lot more. You've also got the option of doing it as a constant. So I can do constants one, uh, like so, and I can pin that into here. So you could have a formula that went ahead and configured out the intensity right there. So go ahead, we'll set that to here. Come on, there, set that to five. And then here is the end result of our thing. So there is our normal map that is generated. Here is our shape. And you can see here, we've got a number of different options. You've got conditionals here. So you could do something uh, based on if uh, less than, greater than, so on and so forth. You've got math operators available here. Uh, you could do fills. You can do gradients. We can pull in a uh, mesh detail. So I could pull in uh, the, the normal position from our source mesh and then modify things accordingly. We've got control over the channels. We could split out a color value. So for example, I could bring in like this guy and then I could do channels right here and I could split like so. And I could bring this guy here and then we could just bring the R channel out and stupidly use it for the roughness. It's, it's not gonna be of any particular point of value, but what you see is you can um, build these complex node networks to go ahead and create uh, shapes that, or sorry, materials that you can then go back over to the painting side of things and you can use that material. So I could drop that material in, like, and these are all materials right here. I could drop that material in to our, our network Oh, I already did. All right, there we go. Now we'll bring it up a couple. And there is our material all over the sword. And again, I could uh, apply a mask on that one and have it only show in certain areas. And I don't think I actually showed this part. Uh, you can actually paint directly on the 3D model, like so. Or you can paint, again, on the 2D view, like so. Uh, so it's a really nice way of texturing 3D models. Again, you can bring in OBJ and FBX files. You can also, again, create these complex uh, materials using a number of different nodes or a mixture of existing textures and nodes. It entirely uses um, a PBR workflow, so all of your, your normal sources for materials. Uh, you can bring them in here. You can see here you got a number of different uh, options here. You can change the luminescence. Uh, you can blend a couple of things together if you so wish. So you could bring in... Uh, a source, a destination, and you can alpha channel, uh, have the mode that changes, or you can set it over here, the mode options over here. So if you ever use something like Photoshop or Affinity Photo or whatever, you've, you've seen these things. So you can multiply the channels together, whatever, using a blend here. There, there is a ton of functionality here on creating procedural materials. And at the same time, you have painting material or the painting tools built in here directly as well. And it's a nice, it's a nice setup. Uh, you've got options for painting uh, symmetrically over the X, Y, and Z axis. You've got control over how your brush is actually done. Uh, you've got a number of different options for how you could go ahead and paint things. Uh, you've also got different view options. So we can switch here and just see uh, the one channel, work on just the one channel. So I could work on just the normal channel if I so wished, or we can see our final assembled material. You also have the option of working in 3D, 2D, 3D only, or 2D only. And co coincidentally, you could actually probably work entirely in 3D if you so wish. So if you wanted, I could go ahead and drop that out, go back to our paint here, let's paint our mask. Oops, actually show it. And we could do our painting entirely here. So let's let's make our gold handle done. And you got the full 3D controls over the viewport. And there you go. So that is Agama Materials. It's a really viable alternative to something like Substance Painter or Substance Designer. Again, a fraction of the functionality, but we're talking a free program here that is quite fully functional. And by the way, when you are absolutely done, you come up here, File, Export, 
you pick the directory and then you pick which maps you wanted to export out so if you this will save all of the results out to that directory uh, if you so wish if you do not want to have the emission map or the displacement map or the ambient map you just want to do those four uh, you could do so toggle them on or off at any time and then you export it out and you will get uh the five in this case the five textures we just did I got a little bit more control over them right here. So you can pick the file type that is exported out and done. That's it. That is Agama Materials. Again, if you want to check it out, uh, I got a lot of windows open here. Uh, you can grab it at itch.io. I will, of course, have that link down below. Uh, but their main webpage is agamamaterials.com. Uh, and if you are interested, they do have a Discord server. So you want to get in there, either just thank the author for making such a cool program and making it available for free. Or if you run into any problems or you have any questions or whatever, I'm sure they would love to hear from you. Uh, and I will have that linked in the linked article down below. So that is Agama Materials. You guys can stop recommending it. I have now covered it. And it is another excellent free tool for you to be aware of. Uh, we live in a blessed world. By the way, if you're interested, I did do a video recently of free alternatives to commercial software for graphics applications. If you want to check that out, uh, I will link that as well. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.